Hello and welcome back. In this video we're going to talk about graphing linear equations in two variables and there is a PDF printout to follow along if you'd like to do so. Here we have some vocabulary words. You can go ahead and copy them down if you don't feel like printing them out. Uh, the first thing is a coordinate system also known as a coordinate plane. Two number lines that intersect at right angles at the point zero zero. So that means we got one line this way and one line this way. The origin is named given to the point at the center of the coordinate system. And the origin, of course, would be right here. We'll show that on another graph here in a moment. The x-axis is the horizontal axis, which would be this one. And the y-axis is the vertical axis, which is this one. Quadrant is one of the four sections created when the axes divide the plane. When we talk about graphing, we're talking about locating a point on the coordinate system using an ordered pair. Remember, ordered pair then is an x comma y. x is first, y is second. We also sometimes call that plotting. And the abscissa and ordinate, these are just special names given to the x coordinate and the y coordinate. So the abscissa is the x up here and the ordinate is the y value. Here we have a picture of the graph. The x-axis right here is the one that goes horizontal and the y-axis is the one that goes vertical. And when those two lines cross, they cross at the origin which, right here, which has the points 0, 0, because you have all the positive numbers for x on this side and all the positive numbers for y up here. And then if you go left on x, you get negative. If you go down on x, you get a negative also. But you also notice that when those two lines cross, they take the bigger plane and divide it into four equal sections called quadrant. Up here is quadrant one, then we go in reverse order. We go quadrant two, then quadrant three, and then quadrant four. And plotting, we have a dot, and uh, we see that the coordinates for that is negative three, negative four. So if I go one, two, three to the left on the x, that's at negative three. And I go down one, two, three, four on the y, that's at negative four. So the coordinates of this point ends up being negative three, negative four and those coordinates define only that point on the graph. Graph the linear equations, two variables. Again, we're gonna graph points A, B, and C. So graph points four, one. So X is here, Y is here. The first column is X, the second column is Y. The abscissa and the ordinate. So we have four, one, so we go over one, two, three, four, up one, and this right here is point A. We're gonna do the next one, zero, two for B. Zero is zero for X, so we don't go left or right, but we're gonna go up two, which is right here, and that would give us point B. So anytime your abscissa or your X coordinate is zero, your point is gonna be somewhere on the Y axis. Point C is negative two, so left two and positive four, up four, one, two, three, four, and that gives us point C here and D, negative four, zero. So left four on X, one, two, three, four, but don't go up or down for Y. And anytime you have a zero for the Y value or the ordinate, you will have a point somewhere on the X and that was point D. Find and graph four solutions of three X plus two Y is equal to four. Now, one of the easiest ways to do this is to write this problem so that y is a function of x. That means get y by itself. So the first thing I'm going to do is move my 3x over. So I have 2y is equal to 4 minus 3x. And y is not by itself yet, so I'm going to divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. So y ends up equaling 2 minus. And now I'm not going to divide the 3 over 2. I'm going to leave it as a fraction, 3 halves of x. And all I got to do is pick some points. I want to pick four points. Remember, we want to graph four solutions, so I have to pick four x values. Zero is always a very good x value to use. Now, since I have a fraction right here, what I'm going to do is pick values of x that are easily divisible by two. So I'm going to pick a two and a negative two. That's three of them. And I have to pick one more. Let's say I go ahead and pick four. The reason I want to pick the even numbers is because I'm multiplying by a fraction that has a 2 in the denominator and it makes it evenly divisible. So I'll end up with integer values instead of uh, fractional values. So you put a 0 in place of x. Put a 0 here. Well, that gives you 2 minus 0 ends up with 2. So my first point would be located at 0, 2, which would be right here. I'm going to do the same thing with a positive 2. So I have a positive 2 in there. The 2's cancel out, give me 2 minus 3, 
which is going to give me a negative 1. So now I've got to graph 2, negative 1 over 2, down 1. Over 2, down 1 would give me a point right there. And I'm going to do the same thing with a negative 2. Well, negative times negative is going to give me a positive. The 2s will still cancel out. And what I'm left with is 2 plus 3, which would give me a positive 5. So now I'm going to graph negative 2, 5. So left 2, up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I've got a point there. And I'll do it again with the 4. Well, the 2 was simplified to a 1. The 4 was simplified to a 2. So I have a 2 minus 3 times 2. Well, 3 times 2 is going to give me a 6. So 2 minus 6 leaves me with a negative 4. So I have a positive 4, negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4 to the right, and 1, 2, 3, 4 down. Gives me that point right there. Now you might notice something here. If I take this line and rotate it around and put the endpoints right there, you'll notice that all three dots are on that same dotted line. That's going to be key in the future. The previous graph showed four solutions of the equation 3x plus 2y is equal to 4. And we noticed that all four points were on the same straight line. And that leads us to this theorem. The graph of every equation of the form ax plus by equals c. The x and the y are your actual variables. The a, b, and c are some integer values. And we're going to say that a and b cannot both be equal to 0. When it's written in that form, the graph will always be a line. And here's something really important to understand. The line that is graphed represents every possible solution for the equation. And in case you were not aware, the form above is called standard form. So when it's written like this, which is the same equation as we have right here, that's called the standard form of a linear equation. We want to graph 2x minus 3y is equal to negative 9. Now, you only need two points to create a straight line in geometry. However, you should graph a third point just to make sure you didn't make a mistake on your first two points. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to write this where y is equal to. So I'm going to write y as a function of x. I'm going to get y by itself. So move the 2x over, and I end up with a negative 3y is equal to negative 9 minus 2 x and then I'm going to divide both sides by negative 3 negative 3 negative 3 negative 3 so I end up with a y equal to now negative 9 over negative 3 is going to give me a positive 3 and a negative 2 over negative 3 is going to give me a positive 2 thirds x and I am going to leave it as a fraction because graphing it or calculating points is much easier when I have a fraction there all I've got to do now is come up with a couple of table of values. So I've got an x, I've got a y, and 0 is always a good starting point. And since I have a 3 right here on the bottom, I want to use x's that are multiples of 3. So I'm going to choose a 3 and a negative 3 to make the calculations easier. And that will be my three points there. So we'll go ahead and substitute a 0. Well, 2 thirds times 0 is 0. 0 plus 3 outputs a 3. So my first point is 0, 3, and that gives me a dot right here. And I'm going to do it again. Well, the 3's will cancel out, leaving 3 plus 2, which gives me a 5. Now my point is going to be 3, 5, 1, 2, 3 to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 up. There's my next dot. And then 3 plus 2 thirds of negative 3. Well, the 3's will cancel out, but I end up with a negative 1 times 2, so I really have a 3 minus 2, and that will produce a positive 1. So now I'm going to go left 3, 1, 2, 3, and up 1. And to make sure that I got it correct, I'm going to take my line and connect it through all the dots, make sure that it goes all the way through there. And remember what that theorem said. Every equation that's written in this form of ax plus by equals c, called a standard form of linear equation, creates a line. And notice how we have arrowheads at the end of these uh, end of the line. That means that those lines or those points go infinitely in opposite directions. So I only use three points to find out where my line is, but my line represents the entire set or solution set of possible solutions for that graph or that equation. 
Here we have two very special scenarios. You'll notice that the first equation, y equals 4, does not have an x in it, and the second one, x equals negative 5, does not have a y in it. Well, what that first one is trying to tell us is, if we take a couple of points, and we're going to leave these in blue, and every value of y has to be a 4, so we just fill in those with 4. Now, the x values, you can pick any number you want. So let's pick 0, 2, and negative 2. So we'll go ahead and graph those. 0, 4, which would be 1, 2, 3, 4 here. 2, 4, which would be here. And negative 2, 4, which would be here. And you'll notice that this ends up being a line also, but it's a horizontal line. So anytime you have just y by itself equaling a number, you end up with a horizontal line. On the x equals negative 5, what they're saying there is each time you pick a point, we want the value of x to always be negative 5. So we put negative 5 in place of x. And you pick any points you want for y. So I'm going to pick 0, 2, and negative 2 again. Go ahead and graph those. So negative 5, 0. Negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0 is here. Negative 5, 2 will be here. And negative 5, negative 2 will be here. And now you'll notice that one creates a special line also. But instead of horizontal, this one ends up being a vertical line. It goes infinitely on. When you have y by itself, you have a horizontal line. When you have x by itself, you'll have a vertical line.